There are so many secrets out there to becoming rich. How do you actually become wealthy? Well, one of the greatest predictors of wealth happens to be something very simple, and that specifically is your age. Age, or more accurately, time, is one of the greatest predictors of wealth that we have. Let's take a look at some of the data. If you look at all of the people in the United States and break them down by age cohorts, we see that the average net worth actually goes up with age until you hit around the 75 year mark. Because at this point, you're probably expecting people to start divesting their holdings and pulling money out of their nest eggs to actually spend it on their retirement, to spend it on whatever they wanna do. Because after all, you can't take your money with you to the afterlife. At least that's what many people believe. Otherwise, there's a very clear correlation between age and net worth. And this is both looking at the median and the average net worths by these age groups. And it's no surprise that home ownership as well is also very correlated to age and that the home ownership rate is much, much higher for people over the age of 60 compared to 18 to 20 year olds. Now that's looking at more of the macro level data, but we can cherry pick an example or two as well. Take a look at someone like Warren Buffett, who's been investing since his teenage years, yet over 99% of his wealth came after the age of 50. That is, he built up the vast, vast, vast majority, almost the entirety of his current wealth after the age of 50. Despite investing that whole time, most of his wealth came in the second half of his life. And this is largely thanks to the magic of compound interest. Compound interest is the interest that you earn on your interest, and then that interest on the interest earns interest and so on, and it keeps building and compounding on itself. The concept itself is quite simple, but the results are extremely powerful, especially when given a serious amount of time. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have an initial investment of $10,000, and this investment grows at 7% per year on an annual basis. After 10 years, your investment will grow to just shy of $20,000, so that's about a double from your initial investment. But if we let it grow for another 10 years on top of that, the investment once again nearly doubles to almost $40,000, so that's nearly 4x your initial investment, but we've only doubled the amount of time. And if you let it grow another 10 years, you're looking at something between $75,000 and $80,000. So you nearly doubled your investment yet again, on top of doubling it a couple times before that. Exponential growth is extremely powerful, and the more time you let things grow, the greater that exponential rise can be. So it makes sense why someone who's been investing for 40 years is going to have likely a much higher net worth, a much bigger portfolio than someone who's been investing for five years. Because that person who's been investing for five years, even if they're a fantastic investor, has not had the same chance to ride the wave of compound interest, at least to the same level as someone who's been investing for much longer. And that's on top of the fact that someone who's been around longer has had more time to actually earn money through an active job or building a business and actually making money in the process. The longer you've lived, the more time you've had to acquire skills, to actually work a job and bring in wages that you can then invest or do whatever you want with. Simply put, you've had more time to make money, so it would make sense that if you're older, you would have more of a net worth than someone who hasn't had as much time to build earnings and work for as long. Not to mention, the more that you work, typically the more you're gonna know and the more easily you'll be able to make more money in the future. But of course, there is a limit to that. Eventually you get old and tired enough that you don't wanna do it, but it's food for thought. People will pay a lot of money for expertise, and expertise often comes with experience. It's in the name. But ideally, you can start to see why time is one of the greatest predictors of wealth when we look at all the different factors out there. Because someone who has more time on their hands, or at least has had more time to actually do things and earn money and invest that money, the greater the likelihood they're going to have a bigger portfolio than someone who doesn't have the same amount of time under their belt. And this also helps us to understand why someone with a longer time horizon probably will fare better than someone with a short-term investment horizon, at least, who's really really only looking for short-term gains and is ignoring long-term risks because ultimately a lot of the benefits of investing come with something like compound interest where you just let time do a lot of the work and you just focus on those incremental gains over time that really compound into massive gains when you look at the bigger picture. And meanwhile, you'd also be compounding your earnings power and expertise so you could still find ways to make more money to then throw back into your portfolio and try to build it that way. Time is the number one ally for an investor, both in the way that it allows you to make up for mistakes, but also in the way that allows you to feed the machine with more money and let things grow over time. So next time you want to get jealous about someone who's 40 years older than you and has a bunch more money than you, just remind yourself that you have not had the same amount of time to 
make all that money, to invest all that money and let things grow. And perhaps instead you should ask, how did that person get to that position and what can you start doing now so that you can have time on your side to get to a same sort of position in the future. Otherwise, if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. But until next time, take care.